God. Oh, praise the glory to God. Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Hallelujah. I'm going to be reading chapter 52 from the book of Enoch. Hallelujah. Let's begin. Blessed is the man who opens his lips in praise of God of Sabaoth. If I pronounce that right. And praises the Lord with all his heart. Hallelujah. Curses every man who opens his lips for the bringing into contempt and calamity of his neighbor. Because he brings God into contempt. You don't want to do that. You don't want to be cursed. Blessed is he who opens his lips. Blessing and praising God. Hallelujah. Cursed is he before the Lord all the days of his life. Who opens his lips to curse and abuse. You don't want to curse. You don't want to say blasphemies. The, all these bad words are out there. You don't want to use them. You don't want to say them. And if you have a problem with them, go to God. Ask him to help you. Ask him to cleanse your mouth. Help, ask him to, to grant you back the language that you were born with. Because you weren't born with cursing in your mouth when you were born. When you first learned how to speak. I remember my brother Dan. He used to be a big, big into cursing. He cursed and cursed and cursed. He he was in the Navy, and he was he got really into it. When he got in the Navy, he picked it up. He picked up that foul, foul language of Satan. And he realized it when he got out of the Navy. And as years passed, he realized how bad his language was. And he got on his hands and knees and cried out to the Lord and begged him for help. And guess what? Guess what? His language has been changed. Those foul words have been removed from his language. That evil speaking, that cursing, that blasphemy. And it is horrible. You don't want to speak it. Nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear somebody saying the, the R word or the S word to you. It's horrible. You don't want to hear it. And demons, they like you saying it because they latch on to it. Like an arrow. And they attack, use it to, to, to attack and harm not just you who are cursing, but those around you who are unprotected. Those that aren't walking, you know, completely in the Lord. They're unprotected and they're being attacked by these curse words. They're general arrows. You, you don't want to speed air, speak arrows and give the, the enemy power, do you? Think about it. Take it up to the Lord in prayer and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Blessed is he who blesses all the Lord's works. Hallelujah. Cursed is he who brings the Lord's creation into contempt. And that is especially when I was back when I was in high school, I wanted to learn how to genetically modify plants and be a scientist. And I realized that was wrong. That God's creation was perfect from the very beginning. That it does not need to be genetically modified. Blessed is he who looks down and raises the fallen. Cursed is he who looks to, to and eager for the destruction of what is not his. Don't look eager for destruction. No. You don't want to look eager for, for your neighbor's destruction or somebody's destruction in some foreign country, say um, Afghanistan. I'm just thinking a random country. You don't want that. No. You don't want to destroy, have destruction of, every, of you know, people's lives and everything. No. You don't want to look forward to destruction. You want to look forward to Lord Jesus Christ returning. Blessed is he who keeps the foundations of his fathers made firm from the beginning. Cursed is he who perverts the decrees of his forefathers. Blessed is he who imparts peace and love. Cursed is he who disrupts those that love their neighbors. Blessed is he who speaks with a humble tongue and a heart to all. You want to be blessed with a humble heart. And you just go up and ask God. Ask him to bless you with a humble heart. Seek it with your, all your being. And it will be given to you. Knock. And, and the door will be opened. Seek. And it will be found. If you don't seek it and don't look for it, you're not going to find it. Cursed is he who... Who speaks peace with his tongue, but while his heart there is no peace but a sword. There are those out there who speak peace, 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 
but their, their heart is far from them. And it's nothing but a giant, ginormous sword that just wants to bring calamity, destruction, and horror. For all these things will be laid bare in the weighing scales and the books on the great day of judgment. And that is coming. The great day of judgment is coming. Every single person has to face the day of judgment. There is no escaping it. You may think, oh, I don't believe in God. It's not going to happen. Even if you don't believe in God the whole entire life, you're going to, one day, this life is going to end. And you're going to be going to that seat in judgment. And you're going to be sitting there where Jesus has got the book of truth right in front of him. And he's going to open it up. And he's going to see your life. And he's going to say to you, I do not know you. And then you're going to be taken by two angels and be dragged and thrown into the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. Do you want that? Do you want to burn for all eternity? Do you remember that story about the rich man and Lazarus? And Lazarus was a poor man out, you know, outside just begging and hoping to have some crumbs from the rich man's table and he was covered in sores. And the rich man was living high off the hog. He got everything he wanted. And one day Lazarus dies and he goes to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man, he one day closes his eyes, he gets buried, and where does he open his eyes? He opens his eyes in the lake of fire. And he sees on the other side of the chasm, there's Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. And he's like, just give me just a drop of water on my tongue, for I'm burning so much. What do you think he ended up in there for? He could have done all the philanthropy he wanted. Give all this money to this, this person, that person. It's still not going to save him. He didn't, have, he, didn't, he didn't believe in God. He didn't trust in God. He put his faith and trust in his wealth, his possessions, in himself and everything else. He didn't have, he had no faith in God. He didn't love God. He didn't love Lord Jesus Christ. No. And that's why he ended up there. And so many people are going to end up there. Because they, they have no faith. They have no belief. Some people, they may look like they're Christians. On the outside, they got the beautiful crosses and this and that. But what about their hearts? Where's their hearts? You can have all the jewelry of, of crosses and figurines and, and everything, but it's your heart that God's looking at, not the physical, materialistic possessions. So where is your heart? Where's your heart? Is it, is it with the devil? Is it, is it over there? Gathering materialistic possessions, money, greed, this, that, gotta do this, that, blah, 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 blah. Or is it with Jesus? Do you have peace? Do you have peace? Do you love Jesus? Do you know who he is? Do you believe you're saved? If you think you're saved by just saying a simple prayer. No, it's by the blood of Lord Jesus Christ shed on the cross. Is why you are saved. And you should believe in that. And trust in him and have faith. When things get hard, you should go to him for to trust in him. When your house is burning down. You don't shouldn't go over and put, and put all your faith that, that you can put the fire out. You put your faith in Jesus, that he'll take care of you, that he'll help you get through this hard time. Don't give in to fear, worry, and doubt, and part panicking, and, and climbing up a tree and screaming obscenities. While your house is burning down, you get on your hands and knees and cry out to the Lord. And there was a family who did that. A tornado was hitting. And the husband got right down on his hands and knees, flat on the floor, and started praying. And the tornado, it may have damaged a wall in their house, but it didn't rip the house apart and throw them. Like it did their neighbors. Which was amazing. The tornado was right next door to their house. It could have easily lifted up their whole house and tossed it like Dorothy's house in Wizard of Oz. But it didn't. Because they went on their hands and knees and they cried out to the Lord and grabbed a hold of him. Were their neighbors? They admitted they survived what they were doing. They were watching TV and they were trying to ignore it and thinking they would go away. The electricity went out and the TV went black and the next thing you know, their whole house was completely shattered and destroyed. And thankfully they survived. They thought it was all because of 
blah, 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 signs, signs, signs. And they didn't even, even think to trust in the Lord. And that's where you should go. You should go and trust in the Lord and turn to Him when, when calamity hits. When you see an accident about to happen and you know you're about to be in it, just close your eyes and grab onto the Lord. And that's what this one brother did. He thought this truck was going to run right into him. And he saw it coming. And he just closed his eyes and grabbed a hold of the Lord. And the truck went past him with his mirror on top of his mirror on his vehicle. And went past him. That was how close it came to hitting him. But it didn't happen. Praise the Lord. And that's where you should go. Don't trust in your own understanding. Don't trust in the flesh. And I'll leave you with that.